Okay. Uh, thank you so much to be here, everybody. Um, I'm very pleased today to introduce um, Erkan Ziali, the um, a new postdoctoral research in uh, the Institute of Astrophysical Andalusia. And uh, she's uh, since a couple of months a new member for the proliferation team of mission uh, a Plato um, 2.0. So um, she's from uh, she came from uh, from Iran, and uh, she 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 gained a, a she had a PhD in uh, 2020 in stellar astrophysics uh, um, with uh, you know, with with topics uh, having um, with topics delta scuti stars uh, in the SH Institute for uh, Astronomy and Astrophysics of Maya He in Iran. Then in 2000, okay, in um, 2018, before she started the joint project with uh, uh, Timothy Betting in the in Australia, in the University of Sydney, um, and uh, they derived a period of luminosity elevation by uh, in co considering studying uh, um, about uh, uh, 2000 delta scuti uh, using the um, uh, catalog of uh, uh, Gaia DL2 biolaxis. And uh, now she's continuing this uh, research in uh, astrosignology of good city stars uh, using uh, innovative tools that are uh, derived for, uh, um, uh, for a complex, uh, on, from complex system and uh, um, uh, network uh, modeling. Um, okay, she, she, she did it in, in, in a postdoc in the uh, University of uh, Zanjan uh, in Iran uh, up to January 2022. And now she's following uh, this, uh, this, um, uh, this line in our institute in the Stellar Viability Group from, uh, from March 2024. So I left the, uh, to have the, uh, the, the word for the, the, the speech for the presentation and uh, welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Sebastiana. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, uh, I'm Elvan Ziali from uh, Iran. Uh, I have started, as uh, Sebastiana talked, uh, I have started uh, my postdoc work here uh, around three months. And uh, this uh, study. Uh, was started in University of uh, Zanjan in Iran, and uh, uh, now is uh, continuing in collaboration with Stellar Variability Group uh, in IAA CESIC and uh, the preparation uh, team for Mission Plato 2. Uh, uh, let, let me to have a brief. Uh, Biography, I'm, I'm from uh, Iran, uh, a country uh, almost far from Spain, and uh, less or more near to the latitude of uh, Spain, and also uh, very similar in culture and uh, also climate. And this is uh, Iran's map, uh, different cities of Iran are shown by their almost historical famous uh, sites. And uh, it's uh, uh, Tehran, the capital of Iran. And uh, this is Kerman, my home uh, city. Uh, I'm from Kerman and uh, uh, almost uh, far from Tehran with uh, around 1,000 <coughs> kilometers uh, this distance. And uh, I got my PhD in uh, Azerbaijan of a uh, part of uh, Iran. And uh, also I graduated uh, uh, from my uh, MSc in this part of Iran. And uh, now I'm here. Okay, <clears throat> let's start by taking a look to history of variable stars. Uh, this is uh, a list of uh, first cases <clears throat> First, uh, this cases of uh, variable stars. The first, uh, the first uh, variable star was discovered by David Fabricius uh, 
uh, that was a long period mirror uh, variable star. Uh, he saw it in August uh, 1596, and uh, then the star disappeared. And again, he saw, he was surprised to uh, see again the star in uh, 1906. And this is the this star when uh, is in uh, its maximum brightness, and this is when the star is in uh, its minimum uh, brightness. And uh, pictures are uh, uh, taken from different uh, different places and also different uh, uh, dates. The 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 maximum price, uh, maximum uh, brightness on July. Uh, 2004 and the minimum brightness uh, on October 2005. This is uh, the light curve of uh, a mirror type star. Uh, let 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 me to have a brief definition about like light curve is simply a plot of the appearance magnitude of a variable star uh, versus time. Uh, it means uh, here. In uh, x axis, we have the time, uh, time goes in this direction, and uh, here in y axis, we have uh, magnitude or brightness, or maybe flux. And the brightness of star is changing with time. Uh, this is like a, a, a variable stars. And uh, mirror types, we expect mirror variables. Uh, to be very cool uh, red giants. They have long periods and large amplitude of light uh, variations. And because, and because of this, we, we can see them. Uh, I mean, the first person discovered a mirror type variable star because uh, in this year, he, does, he didn't have telescope. So uh, this is the a kind of variable tree for astronomical object, objects. Uh, in, in, oh, sorry. in the intrinsic branch, uh, the uh, star, the, the, uh, the possession stars are kind of variable stars. And this area is uh, uh, where we are interested to, to uh, study. And uh, uh, this type of stars uh, are uh, uh, my target to be studied. And uh, in astro seismology, we are interested to the pulsating stars because these stars, because uh, studying of the pulsations can uh, probe the interior physics of star. And uh, in, it's, it's our goal in astro seismology. Okay, uh, what are pulsations in stars? Uh, the simplest, uh, the simplest, uh, uh, pulse, uh, the simplest mode in a pulsating star is si a simple uh, expansion and contraction. As you can see here, for star, for star with. Uh, expansion with the variation in uh, uh, radius, the brightness is changing. This is the fundamental radial mode for a three-dimensional uh, three uh, sphere as a star. And uh, the uh, uh, spherical quantum numbers uh, are uh, in this in this, in this range, in these values. And uh, the same, uh, this is the uh, fundamental radial, uh, sorry, fundamental mode for a two-dimensional environment as a head of a drum. And this is uh, what we see as the fundamental mode for a one-dimensional uh, environment uh, such as a pipe. And, uh, also, uh, for a, a three-dimensional environment like a spherical uh, a star, we have non-radial nodes. Uh, 
uh, when when uh, the L and M is uh, changing. For example, here uh, we have a uh, 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 we, we will have a, a non radial mode when the L is uh, uh, equals one and uh, uh, here M equals zero. It means in the azimuth azimuthal direction we don't have any node. And uh, when M <laughs> equals one means in azimuthal direction we have a node and we expect for a three-dimensional environment that the node uh, would be uh, a, a, a line, a, a surface, a surface. And uh, here uh, where when the L equals uh, uh, two, we have two uh, nodes and uh, two two nodes when uh, when one of them is in a mutual uh, direction. And uh, simply when we have these uh, quantum numbers, we can see uh -huh. we can see this kind of movement in the surface of the star. And when L equals two, we can see this movement for the surface of star. And this is the pulse section in stops. Okay. Uh, you can see here the distribution of uh, pulsating star, different types of pulsating stars in the HR diagram. Uh, uh, the, 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 this, uh, this double uh, line uh, shows the uh, zero age main sequence. And uh, these two parallel gray lines uh, uh, limited the uh, limit the instability strip when where the uh, classical uh, uh, classical pulsating stars uh, are located. Mm -hmm. And uh, here in the lower part of uh, instability strip in the main sequence and uh, also just above the main sequence, uh, there is. Uh, a group of pulsating the stars, the Tasuti stars that are interested for us to be studied. And uh, also you can see the evolutionary tracks with uh, different uh, mass of stars or different uh, mass of uh, stars. And uh, uh, these stars have a uh, different temperature range, different brightness, different masses, different radius, and in an economical aspect, they will have uh, different driving mechanisms. Uh, driving mechanisms means uh, the way that energy is fed into the pulsation of stock. And uh, it could be uh, uh, fed into the star as a a uh, heat engine, for example, like a copper mechanism that is uh, based on the opacity in uh, star layers and could be uh, in stochastical driving mechanisms, for example, in uh, solar-like uh, uh, stars. And we have copper mechanism in Cepheid, so variable or Lyrae, the Tascutis, and uh, this is another difference between the types of uh, uh, pulsating stars. So uh, for the Tascuti stars, the threat detection of the variability was discovered by uh, Campbell and uh, Wright in 1900. And they just uh, reported some variability. And uh, in uh, 1935, Riz Spiegel uh, determined the period of variation in the Delta Scuti star itself. 
And uh, finally, again, in 1956, uh, uh, established a new and separate uh, group for pulsating stars as Delta Scuti stars and also Brickman and Breger uh, have done some calculations uh, uh, for this kind of stars. And also, I, I, know, I know Rodriguez uh, 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 has done uh, a catalog on the Tesquit stars in 2000. And uh, the effective temperature of these uh, uh, stars in this range, and they have a spectral uh, type between A to F. They have intermediate masses. Uh, it means they are in the trans uh, transition region between low mass stars that have convective uh, envelopes and the high mass stars that have uh, radiative, radiative envelopes. And uh, they have short uh, periods, less than one day. And uh, uh, they, uh, they, they have, uh, they show pressure modes and sometimes at the same time, gravity modes. Uh, both are uh, excited uh, by uh, mechanisms in uh, the star, and uh, the delta sweety stars are excited by. Uh, sorry, but are divided by. Uh, it divided to two groups, uh, Pads and Lads. A high amplitude delta sweety stars, uh, which uh, typically show uh, amplitudes uh, bigger than open three magnitude and uh, on lads which uh, show amplitudes smaller than open one magnitude. And uh, here, uh, for our study, we consider the uh, light curve observed by test transiting exoplanet survey satellite, the telescope. Uh, by NASA, uh, who uh, that that uh, is uh, being uh, the uh, uh, exoplanets uh, by uh, transiting or uh, uh, way, and uh, you can see here a uh, uh, a lot here of the uh, Scuti star. Uh, I want to uh, introduce uh, you. Uh, uh, the Fourier transform a linear uh, a linear equation uh, can can uh, take the light curve from the uh, time uh, domain to the frequency domain. Uh, it means when we have a light curve as a collection of different sine functions. Uh, but using uh, the Fourier transform, it can uh, be uh, it can be uh, uh, to can, to the frequency domain. It means that the different sine functions uh, can be separated and uh, can be arranged uh, by their frequencies. Uh, but the frequencies they have. So th th this is mean. This is the um, uh, power spectrum or frequency spectrum of a pulsating star. And uh, the question is why? Why do we need complex network approach for uh, studying of pulsating stars? Uh, the reason could be because. Uh, the linear models cannot entirely describe the uh, uh, stellar pulsation uh, stars' uh, features or simply uh, the, the light curves. Here you can see uh, a light curve of uh, a Delta Scuti star uh, in actual seismology. People usually uh, use this uh, linear model to. To, to describe the light curve, but we know uh, in uh, some pulsating stars, there are some features that cannot easily uh, describe by this uh, equation, uh, 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 equa uh, uh, linear equation. Uh, for example, uh, this is a bump in a, a R-Lyrae light curve, 
and uh, it could not be uh, modeled by the Fourier transform because you can see here the distance between the uh, the model, the the red uh, dashed line, and the real light here, the, the blue line, and uh, it's the reason uh, we are thinking about a way to to be able to model uh, star uh, the, the 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 whole uh, star with and with, with all of the mechanisms that that uh, make this. Uh, non-linearity in uh, the in stocks. So uh, some studies show uh, interactions between modes and convection zone can uh, be the origin of some um, linearities in uh, the, the scooty light curves and uh, complex network is a very young uh, interdisciplinary field of study. Uh, if uh, if you look at this uh, figure, the, the, this 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 shows the citation rate rate against the the year the the time, and uh, for these two paper, the citation has uh, accelerated from after the the two thousands. Uh, these two papers uh, uh, discovered um, network uh, complex networks. The 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 first one. Uh, uh, applied uh, uh, applied uh, random graphs and the second one uh, applied the uh, network science in uh, social uh, in social science and uh, because of this we we call the uh, network science at the science of uh, 21th century and uh, a complex network will combine ideas from mathematics, uh, physics, biology, computer science, social science, and it has been used uh, widely in uh, main area areas of science. And uh, this list uh, continued because I just uh, considered some of the um, some some important uh, citations in different uh, fields of studies, and. Uh, so now we have a uh, complex networks that uh, uh, are applied to describe complex systems. But what are complex systems? Complex systems have a set of elements that can interact with each other. And uh, consequently, the, the complex system show emergent collective properties. It means, uh, uh, you 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 have uh, some emergent collective properties, and you cannot distinguish these properties are due to uh, which part of the the the, the system, because uh, the elements mm -hmm. are are interact together, and uh, all of them are responsible. All of them together are responsible for the uh, emergent collective properties. The Graph theory is the mathematical model we use for uh, uh, modeling uh, complex systems. Uh, graphs contain uh, nodes, you can see here, nodes and uh, nodes or vertexes and uh, edges or uh, links that um, connect nodes. And uh, uh, a graph uh, is used to model a complex system when uh, the elements are mapped into nodes and the the, the relation of, uh, between elements uh, are mapped as uh, edges or uh, links between nodes. So uh, the graphical representation and uh, complex network are the same. People usually uh, use both of them for a graph or a network. So uh, we have uh, different types of graphs. Uh, here you, you see a, an undirected network. Uh, in this network, um, nodes are simply uh, connected. Uh, but in a directed network, 
uh, the connections ha uh, have directions. It means, uh, for example, for the first node, the first node is connected to the uh, second node, but the second node is not connected to the first node. Uh, and also we have uh, weighted uh, graphs. It means some uh, some interactions between elements are uh, stronger uh, than the other uh, interactions. For example, uh, for example, imagine uh, uh, node two and node uh, four, and uh, they have um, stronger relation uh, rather than the four and zero. And uh, we, uh, we construct a complex network of graphs for pulsating the stars by using the visibility algorithm. We have two kinds of visibility algorithms. Uh, the first one is a natural visibility algorithm uh, that, that may uh, make uh, the natural visibility graphs or NVG. And the second one is a uh, horizontal visibility algorithm that make the horizontal visibility graph or HVGs. And uh, in this algorithm, uh, we use the real uh, 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 light curves observed by Hess. For example, this is a light curve. And if uh, we magnify on uh, the, the points of light curve here, uh, the points, different point of the light curve can see each other by straight lines of sight. Uh, the, the, the red lines, I mean. And uh, if each point is mapped to a node in the equivalent graph, if two points uh, can see each other by a, a straight line of sight, the points are connected, but links or edge in the equivalent graph. Uh, for example, for example uh, the, 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 the first, point here can see the second point, but cannot see the, the third point. And here, the first point is connected to the second, uh, the first node, sorry, is connected because this is the equivalent graph of the a type service or a light curve. It's connected to the second uh, node, but is not connected to the third. And in this situation, uh, the, the 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 point satisfy this mathematical uh, relation, and uh, for horizontal visibility graph, uh, the story is the same. Uh, nodes in uh, equi in the equivalent graph can be connected to each other if the equivalent points can see each other but only by a straight horizontal light, uh, line of sights. Uh, it means, uh, uh, for example, uh, this point, this point, only can see the next points, but cannot see uh, the points uh, that have uh, uh, heights, uh, less than the next points. I mean, the points should satisfy this uh, mathematical relation. Point A and B can see each other by a straight horizontal line of sight if they uh, have uh, higher than uh, point C, with, with Y, C, hey, height. And uh, By uh, applying uh, the the algorithm, the natural uh, uh, visibility algorithm, we we obtained uh, these uh, graphs for different types of star. This is for a solar-like star, and uh, 
this is for a Gamador uh, star. And this is for a, a, a S is for a kind of Delta Scuti star, and this is for a Delta Scuti star. And you can see uh, they show uh, different graphs. And it, it could be uh, motivate us to, to, to consider this uh, approach as a way to classify the pulsating star. And uh, for this goal, we should cons consider, we should study the network parameters as the topological uh, parameters. Uh, <laughs> we have local, local metrics and uh, global metrics, uh, local metrics such as degree of nodes, clustering coefficient and page rank. And it continues because we have uh, many uh, local metrics, but I just consider some of them, some of uh, them that uh, I studied here. And uh, uh, global metrics like average velocity, transitivity, average shortest test lens. Uh, let me uh, 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 explain uh, briefly about them. Uh, the degree of node uh, means uh, the number of edge for each, no uh, each node. For example, in this graph, this is small graph, the, the degree of the first uh, node is one, and the degree of node for the second uh, node is three, because three edges uh, are connected to the second node, to the second node. And uh, this is the probability distribution of degree of nodes. Uh, you can see the degree of two. Uh, has the, the 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 biggest probability because uh, most of points in the equivalent graph uh, have degree two. Th this point, this node has degree two. This node has degree two. So most of points of the graph has a uh, degree two and. This is the probability distribution. We will, we will speak about this distribution in the next slides. Uh, clustering coefficient defines as the tendency of connection between the node networks. Consider this node. These yellow nodes are uh, neighbors, and uh, clustering coefficient could be zero if there is no connection between neighbors and could be one if all neighbors uh, uh, are completely connected together. Uh, there is no no other uh, uh, there is no other space for we for connection. I mean, all all connection uh, are 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 filled, are completed. And uh, we have uh, also a uh, page rank. The page rank measures the importance of node, what, what, uh, what the uh, Google or search engines use. And uh, also for average clustering, uh, we can uh, we, we simply uh, take an average on the uh, clustering coefficient for different nodes. Each node has a clustering coefficient. And for having an average, just uh, we take an average on uh, clustering coefficients. And uh, transitivity uh, uh, is less or more uh, near to the average clustering uh, uh, concept. It means the uh, the number of triangles in the graph uh, on the number of uh, triplets, triples that need uh, another uh, edge to, to be a triangle. Uh, for example, here we have two complete triangles and we have some triples that uh, they, they need another edge to, to, to be a complete triangle. So uh, and the average root is pass lens. Uh, pass lens 
is the number of eggs between two, two nodes. Consider a first node and the fifth node. The, the pass length between these two a node in this way, in this pass is two, and in this pass is four. And when we see the shortest pass length, uh, we consider the, the shorter one, two. The shortest pass length between the node one and the node five is two. And when we, we take an average, uh, okay, we take an average for all nodes. And usually you, you need to, 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 to tell the code uh, the 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 origin the origin node or the destination node because you want to to know uh, the uh, uh, average shortest pass pass length for the first node or the for the second node. It, it, it's a, a little bit uh, complicated. And uh, here uh, we considered horizontal visibility graphs for uh, our sample contain, and that uh, contains uh, around uh, 70 Delta Scuti stars, includes high amplitude Delta Scuti stars and less low amplitude Delta Scuti stars. And we mm, just plotted the transitivity versus the average clustering coefficient. And you can see hats and lads are clustered in two overlapping groups. The triangles uh, <laughs> show uh, hats, and uh, circles show lats. Uh, hats show uh, lower average calostering coefficients and uh, higher transitivity values. And uh, also uh, they have lower surface gravity values as we um, expect for uh, evil uh, uh, stars. And uh, here we consider the size dependency of the average shortest pass lens for stars and also the deviation for a random network. Because the linear dependency uh, of the average shortest pass lens to the size of network can tell us about the small worldness, being small worldness of the network. And uh, uh, you can see here the triangle shows. Uh, uh, triangles are for uh, one hat star and circles are for uh, a lat star. And uh, we considered different size of network and we measured the average shortest pass length for each size. And uh, the same for each size of uh, a network for, for a, a lad star. And uh, we see a, a linear dependency for both of them. And both of them are deviated from the, uh, from a random network. Uh, this idea is uh, from this study and uh, also both of them deviate from a random network that shows they do not originate from random mechanisms. And uh, here, uh, we uh, considered uh, this equation from um, this study. This is the probability distribution of nodes, as I explained during some, some uh, uh, previous slides. And uh, uh, in, for, for an HVG uh, network, for any random time series with arbitrary generating probability distribution. It means you can, you can use any random time series, uh, make the network measuring the degree distribution, and plot the probability distributions for degree of nodes. And we expect to have this, uh, this distribution uh, following this equation for any random time series. So we think about uh, applying this approach for uh, noises in uh, our uh, stellar light curves. And uh, 
just for uh, uh, testing that we 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 uh, we uh, consider uh, a white noise as a random time series with Gaussian probability distribution, and uh, this is this is the degree distribution of a time series which uh, was uh, uh, generated by a, a Gaussian uh, probability. And you can see this distribution is uh, excellently matched with the, with the theoretical uh, equation. And also we, we uh, measured the, the distance between uh, these two distribution by the Kolmogorov S minus distance, and uh, it it is around uh, 0. 0. 0. <coughs> 0. and uh, if noises in stars follow this algorithm, we expect uh, such distances for them. So here we consider a real star. This is the light curve of uh, this is a star, this is like about this star observed by Kess. Uh, the, the power spectrum uh, showing many uh, frequencies in the um, in the uh, frequency spectrum of star. And in this process, we uh, generated the networks, we measured the degree of nodes, and we are uh, plotting the probability distribution of degree of nodes. And you can see here, this is the, the theoretical, the theoretical equation I showed you in uh, last, slide, uh, last slide. And this is what we see from, uh, uh, from the Original light curve degree of nodes uh, of the original light curve. When, when when the light curve is mapped to to a graph or to a network, so then we we applied a uh uh you know a, a pre lightening process and we just removed the highest peak or the dominant frequency. Uh, you can see the residual as a red light curve. And you can see the high peak is removed in the frequency spectrum. And again, the network is making, uh, the degree of nodes is measuring, and the distribution of degree of nodes is nearer to the theoretical line. And uh, here, uh, the, the, the green light curve show, uh, show, shows the only background nodes because we removed all frequencies uh, of star and uh, here there is only the background noise. We expect to have a background noise and now we can see here that the distribution, the degree distribution is, com is, is good matched, is excellently matched and uh, it in the range we expect for that. Okay, this this approach is continuing. Uh, I I need to 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 test it for different types uh to, for different star, the first scooty stars and also different uh types of pulsating stars to 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 be examined and uh, it's it is the my current work and my future work, and uh, finally we we ah. Uh, we are considering the Kullback Layer Divergence or KLD analysis for uh, for our uh, light curves. In this method, we should uh, consider the directed horizontal visibility graphs to measure. The, uh, I mean, the, the this this method measures the reversibility uh, in the uh, uh, in the Networks in the light curves, and uh, it could be checked by considering the distances between two distributions. Here we have a distribution for uh, ingoing degrees and a distribution for outgoing degrees. What does it mean? 
here we have a uh, directed graph uh, for each node. You can you can have a degree distribution for ingoing edge, for example, for first node. Uh, 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 we, we, we have we have um, uh, we have uh, one, one ingoing uh, uh, edge and two, two sorry two ingoing uh, edges and for the second the second node we have a uh, one outgoing edge and two ingoing edges. Okay, uh, for each degree we have uh, ingoing degrees and outgoing degrees. Then we can plot the probability distribution as I explained you uh, uh, in the definition of degree of nodes, uh, you, can, you can plot the probability distribution of ingoing degrees and outgoing degrees. And the uh, uh, cool-back layer divergence is defined as this relation between uh, P in and P out. And, uh, Okay, we have uh, we 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 are starting to apply this approach for the real stellar time series. This is a, a real uh, time series and time series and uh, a directed uh, horizontal visibility graph is uh, is uh, uh, built when uh, we when we just uh, go uh, in direction of time. And each node uh, will have so uh, we, we, we will uh, will have such in degrees and out degrees. And then we can have uh, two distributions for in degrees and out degrees. This is degree of nodes. The, the red lines, solid line or dash line, are for uh, in degree. Uh, mm -hmm distribution, probability distribution, and the black one are for out degree probability distribution. And just to be considered uh, with gap, I mean, uh, light curves includes gap and light curves not uh, included gap. And uh, there are some differences. We are, we are uh, working on that and uh, we can see differences between the in degrees and uh, out degrees uh, distribution and uh, finally uh, we have uh, this uh, this uh, uh, this uh, result for the for the uh, measured KLD values for cats and lads. Uh, we should th this figure is very rare. We we are studying this. We are considering uh, different. Uh, ideas about this and uh, just I wanted to show you for uh, a, a, a way uh, we are thinking about to help us to, to know about the dynamical process behind the pulsations and uh, the idea was from this uh, paper uh, he tried to explain the, 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 the process the dynamical process by the uh, KLD values and uh, using that, applying that for our uh, stellar uh, samples. And uh, uh, for this study, test light cubes uh, were applied and also we used uh, Gaia data and uh, this uh, study uh, was funded by Iran National Science Foundation. Uh, in my previous postdoc when I was in Iran and also is continuing by uh, uh, the, uh, by this uh, foundation uh, and uh, several other grants uh, in the IAA. And thank you for your attending. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, and the, the talk is open for questions. Also for people in Zoom, if you want to ask some questions, please raise your hand here. Yes. You first? How do you, 
um, for an appliance that we we are getting. When you use your argument, the results will be from the argument. Um, some help for analyzing the start. I mean, do the argument is useful for what? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Okay, there are lots of ideas for uh, for uh, us to uh, to to continue. the The first idea uh, I I applied the network a complex network approach was uh, something like classifying pulsating stars. Uh, and it is still it uh, it is still in progress, but uh, it's difficult. And uh, now uh, I'm thinking about uh, the we, in Delta Scuti uh, in Delta Scuti uh, subclass we have a variety of uh, uh, of stars uh, with different light curves and. Now, uh, maybe and also, uh, maybe the uh the, the the complex network can can help us to to find the differences between uh light curves and uh, also the um uh I mean the the studying of noises. I think this is this is a good uh goal for the KSD study, uh because by uh study of degree of nodes we are um by study of the degree of nodes for a random time series we are very near to to a to a noise to a background node at least, uh and maybe it can help us to to study the nodes. Mm, but uh, yeah, I, I have also, uh, so I have had some studies on transitivity between, between different types of stars because it can, uh, uh, can uh, be influenced um, by the shape of the light curve. And uh, I, can, I can have different values of different range of variants of transitivities for different types, but uh, it still uh, needs to, to be worked on. Uh, yeah, these are the things I'm thinking about. Okay. Yeah. I was thinking about uh, slide 22. I think you introduced some quantity I was not sure about, but mm -hmm. I don't remember the, the name, so it is around 22. Continue to uh, uh, yeah, transitivity. Can uh -huh. you remind me of what is transitivity and what is yeah. meaning? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, uh, we have uh, uh, at least a mathematical uh, equation for that. Transitivity means the number of uh, complete triangle, the fraction, the fraction of complete triangle uh, to the not completed triangle. The not completed triangles means the the triples that need a one other edge to be a triangle to be completed. And here we have a uh, three because uh, 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 as I remember, because uh, every uh, triangle uh, has three has three uh, three nodes, three corners, and we consider for three nodes. So it should be it should be uh should be three times for three nodes. Okay. Uh, and here, uh, uh, it is uh we know, um, but not uh, not I'm not sure uh, now about the the exact relation between the transitivity but average velocity. But I have done some kind cal of calculations. 
uh, maybe I can find them here. But uh, there is some uh, similarities between them, but they are not the same. And uh, we just uh, we wanted to to study them together to see what's the differences between the hats and lads. And uh, yeah. Yeah, but I was wondering, but mm -hmm. by itself, well, this is a comparison between the average classroom coefficient and transitivity that may rise to some difference between lads and hats, as you have just said. Mm -hmm. But I was wondering, by itself, transitivity, mm -hmm. apart from its definition, yeah. it's a specific one, the networking and so on, uh -huh, uh -huh. what kind of information can give uh, transitivity uh, by itself? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, transitivity, like similar to class during speaks about uh, about uh, uh, being more uh, connected part of a graph. I think when when the uh, clustering is uh, higher, it means in this part of a uh, graph, uh, nodes are nodes uh, no, uh, nodes uh, uh, um, uh, have the tendency to be connected to to each other, and uh, I think transitivity ha has uh, the, the these these uh, meaning or at least uh, follows mm -hmm. uh, this um, concept. Um, uh, I can I can uh, show you. Uh, you know if. There is a there is a study on transitivity in one paper I just uh, read it. Uh, it it was interesting for me. It can it could be used uh, also for a noise uh, study when the noise in a light curve is higher. The transitivity is uh, is uh, in, in in affected is affected by noise and uh, the 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 values are uh, closer. Uh, are smaller, sorry, are smaller. And yeah, just uh, transit, it could be used in my next uh, studies. Where, but by, by now, I don't know. Uh, could I answer your question? Or yeah, more or less. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Maybe <clears throat> nonlinear behavior. The big difference a higher amplitude than the amplitude, and a lower amplitude is, is basically something we, we, we don't know at all. It's the nonlinear developing of the equation. Mm -hmm. And then the kind of key parameter we don't know actually. Mm -hmm. And maybe this point to, to this nonlinear mm -hmm. is to do. Um, So maybe uh, we don't need to plot, but if you go back where you define the H to G, mm -hmm. uh, you have uh, uh, you essentially define yeah here uh, an edge as a line of sight between two peaks that stick out. You don't use the and it, converting the light curve into this plot here, you lose every time information. Actually, like the frequencies get lost in the process. Um, and for instance, between your peak number one and six, there's a line of sight, and there are what, five or six beats of this pulsation thing. Do you? Is there any point in trying to use the length of the the length of the edges to some analysis? Uh, you, you know, would you see a difference between three? Um, so three extrema of your light curve connected by three lines of sight. So that would be three nodes connected with three edges. Depending on the 
time you have between those extra map that is the length of the edge if that's if that's that exists I'm not sure like would you would there be any useful information in this have you considered mm -hmm. that uh, yeah, you, you're right, but just uh, uh, I consider a time series as a story of a uh, star in, uh, along the time. So uh, it for me, it makes sense to consider a non-directed uh, uh, graph or network for uh, a time series, but also uh, we are we are considering the directed graphs to see what happened when when we move uh, against the time and uh, also yeah just uh, I I'm, I'm making some result. Not, not... Uh, in this case, you're looking at the direction or the order of the sequence of events. Essentially, Sorry? you have a, you you resume your light curve in a list of interesting points in time. And mm -hmm. this list, you, you lose the actual time that passes between those events. Okay, this is a uh, test like there's and uh, the points are evenly chosen, at least. Uh... No, but look, here comes it. The, the line of sight you have between peak one and six, or between peak six and eight. Uh, this is not a real check yeah, for yeah. this uh, 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 light curve. This is yeah, just something. It's, oh. an, it's an example. I, yeah, I understand it, it's, your let's stick with your example here. Mm -hmm. Between one and six, or between uh -huh. six and eight, you have the same kind of edge. This double arrow that goes from one to the other. Mm -hmm. One six and six to eight. Mm -hmm. But one is significantly shorter than the other because the time elapsed between those two events. I mean, you have other things happening in the middle, uh, mm -hmm. etc. Does the length of that arrow contain any physically relevant information or not? Um, That's my question. Essentially, was, if you don't know, you use okay. Mm -hmm. Do you mind if I talk? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah of course. Because in this, in uh, doing your talk, I was inspired. In this moment, I was taking uh, notes uh -huh. because uh, <laughs> uh, it's true that uh, as far as the as we know, in the last uh, literature, there are no no technique in order to conserve. But th because it's true that uh, whenever you do the, the, the passage from a time series to complex network, in this way, in the horizontal visibility gap or uh, in the in the in the other uh, technique in the visibility gap, um, you are losing information. The, 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 indeed, it's a, indeed it's a mathematical problem that I was thinking about a uh, mm, few weeks ago. There, there, there is a way to move from uh, network to time series. No, if you don't uh, don't consider the distance between the time distance between uh, the nodes, there is no way to. I mean, you can transform the time series to a network, but uh, it's not be active. You cannot uh, pass to the network to, to the same, uh, from the network to the same time uh, uh, time series. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you, uh, you can, you can show the, the, um, the slide of uh, the kind of, the, the, there is a weight and network, you know? Oh, yeah, is, yeah. Uh, I think that there is a way but uh, in this case, uh -huh. we will be the first one uh, to, mm -hmm. to exploit this technique to weight the link with the distance, with the time distance. So in this, ca in this, in this case, you conserve the information on the distance between the nodes, and maybe it's possible to move another time from, time from the network to the, to the original time series. Uh -huh. Or at least you have an information more to do uh, network statistics and uh, and so on. So I think it's a uh, for me it's an excellent idea idea that we have to to exploit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I I should think about it more. Thank you. <laughs> but, yeah. More questions. <laughs> well, okay. <clears throat> uh, I'm coming from completely directly. Uh, in other field of research, yeah. uh, rotation of asteroids. 
And you say in the last slide that you use Gaia data. So yes. we are trying to use Gaia data to fit rotation of uh, asteroids. So it's, it's imagine like a rotating that is rotating, and we want to see the the difference uh, on size on and for applying this method, do you need a really um, a really complex light curve, or what happens if you have only a few points on the light curve? For example, in the in the next slide, this one. What mm -hmm. happens if if you have only one point every I don't know every cycle? Mm -hmm. Can you can you use this method? Okay, for for our star, uh, if the you know if the light curve cannot be uh, uh cannot be described completely, so the viewpoints cannot cannot show us the the light curve, the real light curve, the complete light curve. Okay. So it, it's the kind of you know related to nice frequency of points or so, and uh, in about the complex network, we need enough points to. Uh, to making the complex network and um, uh, uh, for uh, uh, network uh, uh, parameters to be stable. Okay. And um, I examined that for uh, uh, transitivity and average clustering. And I saw for our, my light curves, I need at least 2000 points to have a stable uh, stable parameters that are not dependent to the size of uh, uh, okay. so network. You need, uh, you need an, an absolute number, 2000, but yeah. it doesn't care about the, <clears throat> the separation on time, for example. If I have mm -hmm. a 3000 point, maybe mm -hmm. in some part of the of the curve, very dense plotting, mm -hmm. and then one point, one point, one time, I have three thousand. Okay, but mm -hmm. can can be applied with this kind of record? Uh, I think so. If you okay, have right. you yeah yeah, I think if you have information, yeah. uh, you know, in you have all your information in this pattern of nodes, uh -huh. you can try. Okay, mm -hmm. and also maybe uh, some weighted networks. Okay. Yeah, maybe. That's uh, right. Uh, uh, but your, your data is um. Uh, Occultation? No, no, no. no. It's rotation. It's exactly this magnitude over time. Okay, because it's the differential is um, the differential of our data from. Uh, no, it's, it's area, reflecting uh -huh. area of the of yeah, the, yeah, yeah, the, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And you have many gaps, you said, no? Uh, yeah. And I'm a bit uh, confused because uh, if I properly understand the last question, uh, uh -huh. if you have holes in your in your uh, light curve. Mm -hmm. Then is for your technique is the same as if you cut this hole in one part of the light curve or the hole in another part of the light curve. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you are telling about the size of. Uh, no, I mean, uh, which are the differences mm -hmm. between different uh, places where you can have holes in your in your light curve. Ah, the different part of a light curve. Yeah, how it affects yeah. to, to your yeah. gap. A gap. Yeah. A gap. You, if you have a gap. Yeah. In one, I don't know. In you have a, like twenty days. You mm -hmm. have a a big gap in a day. Yeah. Nineteen, or you have another the same light curve, but your gap is uh, bigger or shorter or mm -hmm. whatever mm -hmm. in another place. Which are the the difference in your results? Yeah, uh, you know, uh, we avoided gaps in uh, our studies in our results, and also we excluded the very early and very end of uh, notes because we want to model a continuous, uh, you know, light curve for the network, and we, so because the the. Uh, yeah, and very and uh, nodes uh, have some differences, oh. and yeah, we avoided gaps. But it is very good way to 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 do gap filling, and have uh, you know larger uh, networks and graphs and a time series uh, with uh, gap uh, that are filled. That, that's why I was confused. Uh, it is you you cannot solve the, this this problem. I think mm. yet. Uh, I, I mean, sorry. Yeah, I, I think that is the 
The same problem you have when you can, you, when you move from time domain to frequency domain. Okay. I mean, mm -hmm. the problem is that uh, infinity. No, okay, no. The, the problem is that uh, uh, which is the which you have gaps. Okay, yeah. so which is the best way to overcome the gaps and to filter out the noise? It's better with. Uh, uh, classic uh, direct, uh, uh, classic uh, discrete Fourier transform and filtering, or maybe, may, obviously we have gaps uh, also in uh, in this case, but maybe in uh, I don't know, uh, I don't know the answer, but uh, uh, maybe uh, if we have gaps, uh, the statistics of the of the networks uh, is uh, sufficiently robust mm -hmm. in order to overcome the gaps uh, mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, and filter out the noise. Yeah, it, it was just big for the first answer. Mm -hmm. I was thinking that the gaps are not a problem, but they still being of a problem. Okay, no, with, with your previous answer. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, understood. I, I think that maybe the, 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 in a practical way, once one has to, to make tests with very simple signal, uh -huh. with a sinus signal, yeah, yeah. you put some gaps, you calculate the network, you calculate your statistic, you compare it with the world signal. Mm -hmm. If it's uh, sufficiently robust, uh, it's good. Mm -hmm. This is the mm -hmm. and also for just an um, visual imagination, I I think uh, I think gaps uh, will uh, result in some problems because of it I uh, avoid them uh you imagine uh, the, the 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 last point before gap and the first point after gap so they are like the uh a uh, first and end uh point of a uh, light curve yeah. and they can disturb um, the complex network so we avoid yeah. avoid it yeah. yes so but like but that. it's good uh to have more data and I mean, no let, point. Uh, let's suppose that, uh, so, sorry, yeah. let's suppose that uh, in this um, example, no, in the right example, you quit out uh, the point, the time points uh, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, so you have a gap. Yeah. Okay, so the only points that are affected in the network are the point six and twelve. Okay, so you are you have two clusters with. Uh, very let's suppose that the signal is a sinus yeah. you have two clusters in which the statistics is very robust and is very fitted to sinus wave and then they are connected by the gap so i think that when you make statistic on this uh, this network you are overcoming the the the, the gap but why why do you assume that when you remove this seven eight nine and ten uh, eleven point the solution is the same as because so uh, like <laughs> so that's supposed that uh, you quit out uh, on this one and you can use okay. very different time. no 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 more so mm -hmm. you have you have this network with the sinus wave this network with the sinus wave and this link okay so in the network representation you have uh, a network with the statistical probability of a sinus wave, a network with the statistical probability of a sinus wave, or a sinus wave, and the link. Okay, mm -hmm. so all, all that you can measure from the statistical point of view in the nodes affects just a link. I don't know how to say all the. I think, that, for example, I think that the, the distribution of nodes are not affected. It's a, it's it's not. The, very effective noise. Uh, if I may, uh, you are assuming that the, the cycle is uh, very good. You are only losing like two points or four points or so on. But uh, and, uh, there are other cases that you can have a lower the cycle than sixty percent, and this is, is a very yeah, big yeah, 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 yeah. And okay. this is the case that I more or less maybe are yeah. you talking about. Mm -hmm. So, and also, if we have uh, lots of data, we we uh, we have a repeated cycle. You know, we have a repeated pattern. Yeah. If we lose some points, we will have still uh, other points to 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 show uh, to show these these things from mm -hmm. from the light curve. And 
Okay, last question. We need to close this up. Okay, I think the discussion can go on offline. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much again for yeah. this uh, talk, Alan. Um, <laughs> I guess it's up. Yeah. When you compute your network, no, it's